And I am done. Um, so I just finished up reading the 11th book in the Cradle series titled Dread God by Will White. want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing the book, which was just now. Um, a quick note before we jump into it and in that I haven't had a video out in a little while. It's been like a week. I've been out on vacation. Uh, so I was getting a little bit of reading done, not a ton. Uh, but my other problem is, is that I'm simultaneously reading a 1200 page book called The Wandering Inn, which I am close to the end of. Uh, I took a break from reading that book to, to get uh, Cradle, which came out on July 5th, um, because I've been eagerly anticipating this book. It was one of the most anticipated books of the year for me. Um, and unfortunately, I have to give this book a three out of five stars, which, while good, is the lowest that I've rated a Cradle book. Um, lower than the first book in the series, which everybody agrees that is the worst book in the series. So while a three and a half stars is good, I am deeply disappointed, and I am almost guaranteeing that this is going to be my most disappointing book of the month of July. Um, so I'm very sad. I'm very worried. This is the second to last book in the series. The last book uh, is going to be titled Waybound, and it'll come out later this year. But my faith in that book bringing home all of these concepts and making a wonderful conclusion to the series um, are greatly diminished. Um, so I want to go into those reasons. This is going to sound like I hated the book because I have so many negative things to say. Uh, but I have those negative things to say because my optimism was so high. Um, and, and that this series was a top five all-time series for me. And this is definitely going to crash down. Um, probably top ten still, but man, I'm frustrated. So the pacing. Uh, Got to start off with that. It was off. Um, the pacing of these books generally follows a very traditional fantasy uh, method of sl being slow at the beginning, really setting things up, and building up to an epic conclusion with some major set points in between. This book started at a way too fast pace, and I like a fast pace, but the book is too short to be a fast pace the whole way through. This book is only like 400-something pages long, and... To go that fast paced the whole time, I lost anything in between. And so ultimately, I feel like this book should have been hundreds of pages longer. And I get that the author probably can't do that because if you, if, if you haven't been following Will White, he releases two books a year. And he's made comments that if you want to really succeed in the self-publishing world, you have to bang out these books multiple a year to really stay on people's radar and make enough money to make a good living. And it's probably impossible or very dang difficult to make a book seven, eight hundred pages long if you're going to be grinding out two of them a year. Um, you know, not everybody is Brandon Sanderson. And it, so I, I get maybe that that's why the choice was made here. But, you know, it lacked so much of the setup that is so important for these events to mean more to the reader. And so, like, at no point did things slow down. And ultimately, maybe that would have been better if these events felt like these epic, huge moments. And while they were bigger in scale, I mean, the whole point of these progression or cultivation style fantasy books is that they get bigger and bigger. While the stakes were bigger, it felt like they hit less. And I, I try, I'm struggling to figure out why that is. And, and what I come back to thinking is, Kind of the analogy I like to think of it as like a video game. And so many things from this book are clearly trying to play off common video game tropes. And, you know, these characters are basically leveling up and getting stronger and stronger without the title of leveling up. And But they just have different names to it. But that's what they're doing. And when I play a video game, I love the leveling up experience. But when you get too powerful... I lose interest, and I think that's where things are now. These characters are so powerful that I have lost any sense of drama. Um, their their powers feel like they've exploded at such an exponential rate that it feels like they can do anything, and it ruins a lot of the drama for me. And it, it, so, you know, I don't know how an author can successfully do it, but you know. I didn't feel that huge elation that the character achieved the next step here like I have in the past because it, it just felt so inevitable. And I get that I probably should have been feeling that multiple points 
um, before this book, but I didn't. The author did a really good job of selling it and making you really invested, and I just lost that. Um, I want to be this huge fanboy that just says that, oh man, I loved it, this is awesome, just for the sake of saying it, but I just don't. I, so that that's rough. The other major problem I had this, with this book is the focus on the characters. And so without spoiling too much of the past, over the last couple books, we have lost, for different reasons, two main characters. And these are, I don't want to say who they are, but... You know, if you don't know who I'm talking about, leave a comment and we'll figure out how to explain it to you. But two main characters are not there anymore or are changed for the worse. And they're my favorite two characters in the book. So what I'm left with is characters that I don't feel are as compelling, are not as interesting. It ruins the comedic aspect of the book. And while without spoiling anything, a little of that changes through this book it still took a major point in the book for that to happen. And it left me a little bit bored with the main characters. It also took focus away from the main characters into a couple more side characters and made them kind of major point of view characters that I think would have been appreciated more if this happened way earlier in the series. And one of the characters has had a little point of view, but not as much here. Um, and, it just feels too late. The ship has sailed. You're you're way too late in the series to start delving into different point of views. Um, and it takes away from what you could have done with those pages. And left it too jumping all over the place without a cohesive central plot. Um, there was a plot. Don't get me wrong. But it was harder to follow. And it didn't feel as compelling as previous books. Um the last major problem I had with this book is that it left on a major cliffhanger and didn't feel like a proper ending. It kind of reminded me of the ending of Dust of Dreams from the Malazan series, where it just kind of ended. It didn't have this major thing that got a completion at the end. It really was just setting up the next book. And I get why Steven Erickson did it. When Steven Erickson wanted to finish out his series, it was going to be nine books, and he delivered a 2,000-plus page tomb to his editor, and they said, this is too big. We're going to make it two books. And he, you know, rightfully, it wasn't made to be two books, and so it did kind of feel slapped and cut off. I don't understand the reasoning here. Um, I'm hoping that the final book in the series is as good as The Crippled God, which is my favorite book of all time from Steven Erickson. So let's hope that it all comes together because I was disappointed with Dust of Dreams. It was my least favorite book in the series. So let's hope those analogies keep on coming. Um, but yeah, the cliffhanger was a struggle and it didn't. It just felt so uncradle like I'm used to some little minor you know, cliffhangers, but the central drama of that book was concluded by that point. Now, on the good side... The last third of this book was wonderful. I really, really did enjoy, outside of the cliffhanger, what happened in multiple major set pieces to close out this book. Um, it felt satisfying to watch these battles, which have been clearly building up for a long time, finally come to fruition. Um, but for all the reasons that I stated, this book is my least favorite of the series. And I'm disappointed, I'm frustrated, and I'm really hoping it comes back to shape and concludes in an amazing fashion. Uh, I'm, I'm worried that they're not going to be able to do it in one book, that one book is going to feel way too rushed. And a lot of the problems that I stated here are going to be similar in the final book. But here's hoping I'm wrong. I love being wrong. And I'm really hoping it's the case here. So that's my review. Hope I didn't disappoint you. And thanks for watching.